event number seven is the split triplet. We have a pegboard, we have some double unders, and then two movements with a dumbbell, 55 pounds for the women, and they have to lift it in a split style. We start with the pegboard ascent. Now both pegs must reach the top and both pegs butts come down and we already have a stumble from Turi Helgadotter on that pegboard. Tia Claire Toomey also fell off the pegboard to start the event. The one I'm looking for, Sean, is the bottom right part of the screen and that is Amanda Barnhart who wasn't able to climb a single one last year. It looks like she's fixed that hole. Once again, we appreciate CrossFit providing us with these pictures from their world feeds of the single Pegboard ascent is done, and now it's on to the 100 double unders. Catherine Davis' daughter was first done with that pegboard. So some of the athletes in this heat don't have a whole lot of experience with this thing. If this is your first time at the games, you may not have seen it before. Yeah, I think for the athletes coming up on this split snatch, if they haven't practiced splitting with the dumbbell, there's a coordination factor. Like, it's not just going to be go, go, push, and make all physiological engine. They're going to have to think what foot goes forward as what dumbbell is in the, the hand, how am I going to stabilize this, and also remembering to stand completely up with the dumbbell before they lower it. Well, and here's the thing you mentioned, thinking about it in coordination. You have to lift with the arm that's opposite of the foot that goes forward. So if you're lifting with your right arm, your left foot has to go forward. That could, I mean, that's enough to mess some people up. Think how hard that was to explain. Now tell <laughs> someone to go and do that on the fly. And I think what you're gonna see here with these athletes is that you're gonna see a separation between those that are just good at doing CrossFit and the athletic ones that have experience with these multiple position movements. Well, Katrin David's daughter, Kerry Pierce and Tia Toomey are on the lead pace. Kristen Holtz is a handful of reps back. As every athlete is done with the 100 double unders, except for Amanda Barnhart. Now Barnhart may have an issue with one of her ankles. I was told that she may have injured it a little bit during Mary. So we'll have to keep an eye on her and how that affects her during this event. But Tia Toomey right now is your leader, five rounds. Interesting strategy from Toomey as she is doing a clean and jerk. It must be just get the, the barbell to overhead anyway or the dumbbell to overhead anyway. That's a little bit slower. It's going to take her a little bit more time, but possibly less fatiguing. There are 22 works out over time. total repetitions in each round, and Tia Toomey is done first. Back to the chalk, and she will begin her second of five rounds. So 22 scored repetition, one for the pegboard. You get credit for one when you finish the double unders, and then 10 each for the dumbbell movements. Catherine David's on her now, moving back to the wall as she tries to vault herself up the leaderboard. Remember, there are a lot of points on the line here, and the gap between each finish is 10. And this is exactly what I wanted to see from Tia Claire Toomey coming into this event. She was losing some momentum. She didn't have any bad events. She just wasn't having those standout dominating events. So Tia Claire Toomey, from what she, finishing the dumbbell, racing to the pegboard, wasting no time. This is exactly what she needs to do to reestablish herself with these top 10 ladies. Tia Toomey and Carrie Pierce are under their second of five rounds. And now Jamie Green picking up the jump rope as well. I think the one thing we are overlooking in it is the 100 double unders in the middle. For a couple of rounds, two to three rounds, it, it really isn't that bad. In fact, going unbroken isn't the worst thing. But if you remember the open event last year, that had 100 double unders in between these high skilled movements. They had dumbbell snatches, muscle ups, bar muscle ups, and overhead squats. It's by the third round and fourth round, they got so much harder and so much more fatiguing. So I'll be curious to see how they handle rounds three and four moving into five. Tia Toomey done with her second set of 100 double unders and now on to the dumbbell for 10 split snatches from the hang position. What do you like about what you're seeing from Tia Toomey, Josh? So right now, very efficient. She started with that snatch, and what she might do is go to the snatch until she gets a little fatigued. When she starts feeling that fatigue, switch to the clean and jerk that she did last time. Or maybe she got through that first round and she's like, I got this, and she's doing the faster but more difficult snatch. It's hang dumbbell snatches, then it's 10 hang dumbbell clean and jerks. And again, you have to put 
the opposite leg forward from the arm that you're using to lift. Catherine Davis' daughter's on the left. She currently sits in third in this heat, and it's Carrie Pierce who is in second. But Tia Toomey, once she hits 44 reps, she'll be done with two rounds, and she'll move back for round number three. And as you guys watch, you'll see a couple different styles. One, just the difference between the snatch and the clean and jerk, obviously. But you also see kind of a swing or a kettlebell style, which, again, takes longer, but it's a little less taxing on the heart rate and the shoulder. And then you'll see more of an Olympic pull where the dumbbell stays closer to the body and goes straight up. That takes a little bit more energy, but it's faster. So it's all going to be about what's the best strategy for pace and getting through this workout. If you go too hard out of the gate, you'll find yourself taking breaks later on in the workout, which will obviously hurt you. Tia Toomey back for pegboard climb number three of five. The Turi Helgadotter on the right of your screen has been falling off the pace. He was struggling with the pegboard. Right now, Tia Toomey is the only woman on round three, and she is the leader in this heat, the leader on the standings, and she is blowing the doors off of her competition at this point of the event. Now, third set of 100 double unders for Tia Toomey. So impressive, over 300 pull-ups completed about 12 hours ago, and they're going right up that pegboard like it's nothing, like they're not fatigued. The biceps, the lats, they look like they're fresh. It's amazing. Notice this is a back-driven movement of lats and rhomboids. Look at those back muscles as she goes up and down that pegboard. Catherine Davis daughter working her way down the pegboard, 100 double unders, and then 10 hang split snatches with the dumbbell, and then 10 hang clean and jerks with the dumbbell. So 20 total movements with the dumbbell after these 100 double unders. This is Tia Toomey, who's the leader. 66 is the number that she needs to hit before she heads back for round number four. Still staying unbroken on all those double unders after the third round. And a lot of that comes down to keeping your composure and trying to turn the double unders into a rest period in between those two movements on the front and back end. Tia Toomey on to her third of five sets of hang dumbbell split snatches, 10 reps. Looks like her strategy has been to snatch the first five, and then as she moves that dumbbell up, she'll move to the clean and jerk as she gets more fatigued. So she's had a plan, she's sticking to the plan and executing it. As long as you're in first place, you stick with the plan, right? It's going well at this point. Well, and the good news for her, she doesn't have to worry about any other women in any other heats, because these are the only 10 women competing right now. Toomey is your leader. 10 reps to go in this round of the hang, dumbbell clean and jerk. And again, you gotta put the opposite foot forward from the hand with which you're lifting. Catherine Davis' daughter sits in third place as Carrie Pierce has moved into second. Davis' daughter is closing out round number three. She is on her set of 10 hang dumbbell clean and jerks. Now that's big for Catherine Davis' daughter coming in in ninth place overall after the cuts that we had earlier today. And as the points scale has changed and now it's fixed for the rest of the weekend, is these are the times where you need to start chipping away. You don't have to make up all those points in one event. You got a few events left. We don't know how many, but there are a few events left going into the rest of the weekend. Get those little 30 to 40 point chunks while you can. There are 110 total scored repetitions in this event, and Tia Toomey is through 66 of them. She is now on to round number four. Carrie Pierce sits in second. Davis Daughters in third, Jamie Green, and then Kristen Holta has fallen off the lead pace. So Tia Toomey looking to put some more distance between herself and Kristen Holta on the overall leaderboard. Toomey came in with just a five-point lead over Holta as Carrie Pierce works her way back to begin round number four. To me, Five this is the big here. round where we decide, it's like, what is the toll that it what kind of toll is getting taken on these athletes, right? We've already done three pegboard ascents, 300 double unders, 30 clean and jerks and snatches on each arm with a 55 pound weight. This round four is kind of, you're gonna see that breaking point for a lot of the athletes. Tia Toomey on the left of your screen is your leader. 88 repetitions, that's the number that will let you know that she is done with round four. Carrie Pierce has moved into second. She is also on her fourth round of double-unders. She's on the right side of your screen. 
be interesting to see how they handle the, the double unders on the last few rounds here, or the, the dumbbell in the last few rounds here as the shoulders and lats are fatigued from the climbs and the double unders. Toomey back to the dumbbell, 10 hang split snatches that she has to complete alternating each arm. After that, it is 10 hang clean and jerks. She just looks so smooth out there. A lot of times you're gonna see an athlete is laboring is don't look at the quality of the movement, look at the expression on their face because that gives it away. There's right. not a lot of poker players out there. <laughs> right? And the Tia Claire Toomey's face is so calm and so relaxed. Watching her sprint back and forth to the rig and the dumbbell speaks volumes to the intensity that she's bringing to this event. The Tia Toomey is leaving everybody in her dust as Carrie Pierce is nine reps back, Jamie Green 14, and Katherine Davids are, all three of them are still on their fourth round of 100 double unders. Toomey's getting ready to close out round number four. Once she hits 88 reps, she'll move back to the pegboard for a fifth and final time. Carrie Pierce now onto her hang dumbbell snatch. She just finished 10 of those. Now it's the hang dumbbell clean and jerk. That's nice the final rep for, for Toomey for Tia to be at this, uh, this point, knowing that she's in the lead, she doesn't have to press. It's go with her normal strategy, go smooth, smooth is fast, of course, and the reason why her face is so calm, she's in a place where she can be calm, right? It'd be interesting to see if, if someone can sneak up on there, if uh, the facial expressions start to, start to change a little bit. All of Tia Toomey's rounds have looked basically identical. She doesn't look like she is slowing down at all, and this is her fifth and final trip up and down that pegboard. When you look at the movements from a, a technical aspect, is these are very rhythmic movements. You can get in sync and get into a groove. Pegboard is one of them. There's a, a dance between the pull and the twist of the torso and the engaging of the core. Finding a rhythm on double under, staying relaxed, using your feet, and just focusing on your wrists. And with hang snatches and clean and jerks, again, when you're switching arms, it says that swing and that rhythm. If you can find that and just settle in, that is a massive advantage for you if you have the fitness to back it up. Tia Toomey is on her fifth and final round of 100 double unders. Carrie Pierce is on her fifth and final pegboard climb. She is behind Toomey, but Toomey is just putting a ton of distance between herself and Pierce at this moment. David's daughter still sits in third, and Jamie Green is in fourth. Kristen Holta is right now in fifth place as Jamie Green looks to track her down for second place overall in the standings. And there is Kristen Holta, who just got done now with round number five. Toomey back to the dumbbell. She has 20 reps remaining. She has to complete 10 dumbbell split snatches and then 10 dumbbell clean and jerks. those hips to drive, the hips open. We're talking quarter extremity movement here. Real important that the hips finish before the elbow bends, before you start to split those feet. So we get the full power of the legs doing the work and not muscling with the arms. That's efficiency right there, which is going to lead to less fatigue and more power. 10 reps remain for Tia Toomey. Carrie Pierce in second place, now on to her hang split snatches. Now a no rep for Toomey, but it doesn't matter. She has a ton of distance between herself and Carrie Pierce. It's a little mistake there. She snatched that first rep, and she's required to do a clean and jerk there. Again, as uh, you get fatigued, the uh, thought process starts to go, right? Five reps remaining for Toomey. Now a no rep again, and Carrie Pierce Forgot to split the feet there. Creeping up, but Toomey does have about a six rep lead on her. So Carrie Pierce right to work, Toomey continuing to crank away. Final rep for Toomey, second win for Tia Toomey. <laughs> Carrie Pierce looking to lock up second place. Pierce coming into this event in fourth place overall, 77 points off the lead. If she takes second, she will earn 90 points. Pierce is in and Pierce will take second.
Catherine David's daughter, the leader on the floor right now, looking to lock up third place and earn 80 points. Can't begin to describe how valuable that is for Catherine Davis' daughter. Sitting in ninth, she ha I mean, she didn't win the games two years in a row and podium again because she's not fit enough to be here. She made the cut, she survived, but we have, she has a great opportunity to jump up a few spots in this event alone. Catherine Davis' daughter is not dead in the water yet. David's daughter is done and she is in third place for Catherine David's daughter. 80 points as she looks to continue to climb up the leaderboard. Jamie Green on the left of your screen. She is now the leader on the floor. She has one rep remaining. Jamie Green is in. Fourth place and 70 points for Jamie Green, who is now going to gain some ground on that woman. But if Kristen Holt is next across the finish line, all she's going to surrender are 10 points to Jamie Green. She had about a 45-point buffer coming in over Jamie Green, but she's only five points behind Tia Claire Toomey, so she's not going to lose a lot, but it's... And that just shows you how the point scale is now changing almost right. the entire competition. But these little individual races, it's a bit, much bigger difference now between a third place and a sixth place than it was just one event ago. Right. Hayes, big time to be a winner right now, and Kristen Holta is in. I mean, it's crazy thing to Josh's point. They're like, oh no, she got fifth. What a, what a tough event that must have been. <laughs> 60 points for Kristen Holta. Jamie Green will creep 10 points closer to her. Now, Haley Adams. Looking to lock up six. Turi Helgadotter, Bethany Shadburn, and Anna Fragku have fallen way back, but they are on their final rounds here. And based Bethany off how Shadburn they finish this event, Catherine the might move up towards the top five. Awesome. And we saw Tia there, number one in the world, coaching up the newcomer, Haley. Uh, is that Haley Adams who's coach, coaching up back there? But that's the that's the spirit of CrossFit and how it developed in the early days. Just everyone come encouraging each other, and there's someone that's trying to take your crown, and Tia's coaching her up during the event. Haley Adams, she is next across the finish line. So the youngster making her debut appearance here in the individual competition will take sixth. That will be good enough for 50 points. Now Bethany Shadburn looking to lock up seven. And Chase, you mentioned it earlier, but keep in mind the amount of grip work and pulling that these women did less than 24 hours ago in the Mary event as Shadburn comes across the finish line. It's a lot of pulling. I mean, you got the massive vertical pull down on the pegboard and up from the dumbbell snatches and no reprieve in between on the double under. So <laughs> I don't know what's coming up after this, but I'm sure they're all hoping is like, just don't let it be muscle-ups, please. <laughs> <laughs> Bethany Shadburn locked up seventh place. Three women left on the floor. It's Amanda Barnhart, Terry Helgadotter, and Anna Fragku. And it's not costing Helgadot or anything to rest right now as Amanda Barnhart, who has been struggling on the pegboard. She is in her fifth round. And Barnhart's going to finish that trip as Turi Helgadotter looks to finish up her event. Helgadotter with four reps left. Final rep for Turi Helgadotter. And she will get in inside the time cap, and Turi Helgadotter locking up eighth place. 30 points for her. Final 30 seconds, Fragu and Barnhart. 
won't be completing this event inside the 20 minute time cap. Just 20 seconds to go. Keep it going, ladies and gentlemen. Amanda Barhart. Craig, who on her hang split snatches. Five seconds to go. The frag who's going to take ninth, and Amanda Barnhart will finish tenth. Tia Toomey gets her second event win of the competition, and it's Carrie Pierce who takes second place. You know, he said coming in that Tia need to, needed to reestablish herself, not just for the field and not just on the leaderboard, but I think for her. And you can see that celebration. It's almost a, not a sigh of relief, but it's like, everything's okay. I'm back in business, back in the Coliseum. Tia Claire Toomey, that'd be for event number seven. Important event win, especially when there are so many points on the line right now, and you were super smooth through all of those movements, but a little hiccup to start on the pegboard. What happened there? Oh, I just slipped out of the hall. Nothing biggie. Not a big deal. Falling up higher. <laughs> sure. Now we've seen you through all these movements before. We've seen you on the pegboard. We've seen you on double unders. Those dumbbell movements are a little bit more unique with the splits. How comfortable did you feel with them? Um, well, I mean, dumbbells always come up in training, and they you really had to focus on those movements, just with alternating arm and leg. So there was a few times that I stuffed up there, but uh, that was a great workout. This is the first time we've seen just this small amount of 10 final women out on the floor. Does it change your mindset at all, knowing that we've gotten here over the course of cuts through the weekend? You know, those girls that have been cut so far are my friends, and it's actually quite emotional even thinking about it. They deserve to be here. and. Um, And, you know, um, I hope that they know that they can walk away with their he heads held high. And it's just an honor to be a part of the 10 here out on the field because they're phenomenal athletes as well. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Tia Toomey with her third straight finish. In